Oh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you are in the world, a very warm welcome to Silver Tent TV. I'm your host, Siobhan Reardon, and Elsa's here, my dog, and occasionally she can join in. Um, the Silver Tent is a global online community for women over 50. It's a place where you can come to be supported, to realise those dreams that are yet to be realised. And it's a place where we also get to share the wisdom um, of women over 50. Um, we've been around the block a few times and we have a lot to share. And um, today I'm delighted to welcome uh, a member of the Silver Tent, Jane Duncan Rogers. A, a very warm welcome to you, Jane. Thanks, it's great to be here again, thank you. Yeah, so this is our, our second conversation. Um, and um, Jane, you're, you, you have an incredible track record of helping people to prepare for end of life. And um, as we know, I, I, that, that's something that touches me deeply as someone that went on that journey with my mum and as someone who also lives with a uh, terminal heart condition. Um, so end of life is something that's kind of real for me. Mm. Uh, just tell us a bit about how that work came about, Jane, and, um, and Before okay. I Go Solutions. Yeah, um, Before I Go Solutions is the social enterprise that has come out of my own personal experience of my husband dying, which unbelievably is eight and a half years ago now. I, I'm just such a long time. But anyway, he died of cancer. And three years after that, I wrote a book about it, Gifted by Grief. And I thought people would be interested in the spiritual awakenings that I had had, let's say. Um, but actually, I was writing it from a cathartic healing point of view. Actually, what they were interested in was the questions that I'd asked him before he died. And they were really practical ones like, um, what kind of coffin do you want? And how do you want your body to be dressed? And where are your passwords? And what are they? You know, really practical things. So, and when people said, oh, I need to do this too, I thought, right, I better get my act together. So I'd been, and my background is as a psychotherapist and coach. So I put on a workshop and it sold out and it was like, Oh, right. Okay. I bet I better. It felt like I was being guided to do this. I've never really felt like that before, especially in business, but it certainly felt like at this time. And so a few years on, and here we are now, we are, we have been doing online courses to help people make a good end of life plan before it really needs to happen. And, um, and of course now, because of COVID, you know, many more people have heard that term, end of life plan or advanced care plan, or are, have been forced to admit that they're not immortal, you know? Um, I mean, it's a pretty tough way to have to come to terms with that, but, um, but it is happening. So, yeah. yeah. It felt, you know, in the time of COVID, really relevant for us to, have this conversation again and I know people that have died and um, uh, and the shock uh, for their loved ones that are left behind um, and on top of it then having to deal with all of the issues of someone dying um, so yeah let's have this conversation um, in the times of Covid um, so before I go solutions, um, you offer an end of life plan and you, you help people to formulate that plan. Yeah. Um, and you're also um, been involved in now because you're in such demand, ironically. Um, you've now started to work in training facilitators of before I go well, solutions. Yeah, I mean, I, I had already... I had, Originally, I thought, well, eventually I will do this. I'll train people. And we did actually do our first training in 2017, I think it was. Gosh, yeah, it was. It was a whole year earlier than I thought it would be because people were asking me for it. Yeah. And um, so we are now running our, we're now in the middle of running our fourth training. We've got another one coming up. And this is basically to train people to help others to get their end of life plan done. Because you know what? There's lots of this information out there about what you need to do. I'm calling it an end of life plan. It includes what the doctors these days have been calling your advanced care plan, but there's more to it than that. And um, the thing that I've discovered is that 
even if people have all this information, even if you know it really needs to be done, even if you think you need to have a conversation with whoever it is, you don't necessarily do it. And there's lots of reasons for that, but it doesn't, the end result is it doesn't get done. And that's really what we're helping people to do, get it done. I mean, it's fantastic. And um, we haven't really said much about that end of life plan and some of the contents you, you touched on it, but, but just for a moment, let's just explore that a bit about some of the things people need to consider before they go. Well, everybody probably now will be aware of their will. Um, that obviously has to happen. There's also the healthcare power of attorney and the financial power of attorney, the power of attorney being the person that is going to represent you if you can't speak for yourself. And unfortunately, we've seen quite a lot of that happening through COVID. Um, then there is what the doctors have been calling maybe advanced directive or advanced decision or advanced care plan. And that is the document that states what treatment you do not want to have which could include a do not resuscitate order um, and those are the things that people might now know about but there's lots of other things as well there's like the organization of your funeral there's your death cleaning not everybody's familiar with the term death cleaning it really it means decluttering towards the end of your life <laughs> i.e you've got a lot of stuff who's going to have to deal with it somebody's going to have to deal with it if you're no longer here um, then there's your digital legacy because we have a life online now whether we like it or not most people have some kind of a life online and that will stay alive unless you put in place the things that need to be done before you've gone um, and then also in the way that I think about it we have what I call your living legacy and that's the way that you want to be remembered and we can start that at any time it includes for example things like memory boxes um, but nowadays more and more it would include uh, videos all sorts of things and maybe the time is now in these days when there's so much information out there and we've all got so many photographs or videos or whatever actually the living legacy consists of okay so to avoid somebody just chucking it all which is what will happen because it's really easy to get overwhelmed um what would i like to actually create and leave behind so that i'm remembered in this way it's a, a beautiful thought can you give us some examples of what that legacy looks like in some people's cases yeah, so um, some people, for example, have done a simple timeline, you know, just on a big sheet of paper, a simple timeline of the main events in their life and the way they have followed on from each other, and then added in some of the stories or um, some of the wisdom that they have learned. That's been really lovely. I've known other people who have created dance pieces or a, a piece of music, um, written a particular story, one thing that I think is really important, perhaps for everybody, is that if you've got favorite things that you are leaving behind, there needs to be a story attached to them. Because they're favorite for you, but without the story, they're meaningless to anybody else. So I really it, encourage that. Yeah, I, I, and what a beautiful gift as well, to give yeah. to yourself and to those loved ones that you, you leave behind as well. Yes, it is, yeah. So um, thank you for filling that in about a bit about how um, the end of life plan works. So let, let's move now on to the facilitator training because there may well be people here that would be very interested in that. So um, what, what would I, if I do your training and I become a, an end of life facilitator, end of life planning facilitator, um, what would I be doing with people? you would be basically taking them through now we had to adjust this obviously in covid because it, it now we have to provide for people of in in person and online in person and 
uh, virtual, let's say. Um, but basically, you would be taking them through the before I go method that I developed, which takes everybody through what I just described, which was, you know, a very short version of what actually has to happen so that people can complete their workbook, which is like um, a kind of checklist of everything that you need to have in place. And, and can I just add here, it's a beautifully comprehensive workbook, isn't it? It's not... You don't have to fill out every part of it, um, but it is a holistic thing. And I don't think there would be anything that wouldn't be covered in that. Um, no, thank you for saying that. Um, I mean, my purpose with it really was, it was, it's really actually just an extension of all those questions that I asked my husband um, and how and why I knew they were really important to be answered. So for some people, you know, they will, go through it fairly quickly because they'll have some things in place and some of the, a lot of it might be irrelevant and you can put not applicable and if you are filling in anything like this whether it's the before i go workbook or anybody else's it's really important to put not applicable because the people reading it if you've just left it blank they won't know that you've read it and that you've actually made a conscious decision so yeah um so uh, what, yes. That's what, you know that when you just said those words, conscious decision, I think that's what I find very powerful about your work is it, it's empowering mm -hmm. for people who um, want to make an end of life plan. And um, it is about you having that chance to articulate your choices and your decisions um, so that other people either aren't forced to make them or don't impose their decisions on you. Yeah, that's right. And also because um, if you have the courage and the willingness to make the decisions now, you're going to be um, facilitating harmony in the family afterwards. Because I know that people say, can't imagine that their family would argue about what has to happen after somebody has died. But I'm afraid to say they do. It's really difficult to take that on board that your family that is so lovely would actually argue. But I'm afraid to say even the best of families are, can argue. So if you can put this in place, it really helps them as well. But actually doing it right now, it's like it brings you to life much more. Not, not that your, your life isn't wonderful already, but it's like there's something about facing death in a conscious way and in a practical way that actually brings you to life right now it, it's almost by it, it's almost like there is a boundary there you know there is a boundary <laughs> and when we have boundaries it can help us actually feel safer to just be here right now appreciating the deliciousness of everyday life I think what I love most about your work is that it also breaks that taboo um, that actually all of us are going to die <laughs> And of course, with COVID, there's so much fear out yeah. there and fear of death. And I think um, it makes, by seriously looking at your end of life, it makes that fear dissipate. Yeah, yeah, yes, it does. And that's one of the surprises that people have when they do this work. And um, that's one of the wonderful things about being a facilitator, because that's actually what you're facilitating is that people get surprised. They get it's like, oh, I'm I was more afraid of doing this than actually it warranted, because actually doing it is interesting, is enjoyable, even is um, I'm learning a whole lot of things about myself that I didn't know before and about the family, maybe as well, because you have to have conversations. Um, so it's. I think people do get surprised and that's lovely, you know, and if I can facilitate that happening more and more throughout the world, then that makes me a very happy woman. <laughs> it's a wonderful gift to bring to the world as well, Jane. Um, so I, I want to sign up for your facilitators training. How do I do that? And what am I going to experience? How, how long is it going to take? Well, basically, it starts with you doing your own plan. So your own plan is um, it's an online course and you have one. My head facilitator actually runs that. So there's seven live coaching calls. They're all of an evening. He takes you through it all. Um, and 
you end up at the end with your workbook, which is part of that, and your own plan. So you have to go through your own, first of all. That's really, really important. I can't have people out there doing this training without having taken care of it themselves. That would be just not on. And also experience that walk through it as well and the um, roller coaster of emotions. Exactly, exactly. Because that, of course, then makes you more empathic to other people when you're helping them. So once you've done that, then there's part two, which is um, a, a whole day um, online, a whole day with lots of breaks, lots of cups of tea, don't worry. And um, I've called that the practicals, doing death differently. And so in that we cover, um, we cover the importance of having end of life conversations and how to help other people who are concerned about, especially having conversations with people who don't wanna have them very much, how do you actually do it? Um, we cover the aspects of what I call do-it-yourself death. That's if, because most people don't know that you don't need a funeral, for example. But if you don't want to have a funeral, there are other things that you need to know that need to be put in place. Um, we cover how to um, uh, keep costs down and how to understand bereavement. Really important that. So that's the second um, part if you like and then the third part is putting it all into practice so we're taking everything that you've learned in your own plan we've taken everything that you've learned in part two about how you can do death differently and then we're putting it together into um, four modules where we're five modules where I teach you about working with groups if you want to work with groups you can work with people um, individually we go through a group format so you can use that and you have to cover exactly what is in that, but you can add things on as well if you want to. There's that element of creativity. I think that's really important because it's such a, a personal thing, this. Um, we talk about action taking skills. Now that's really important because remember what I said earlier about people not wanting to do it? There's ways to help people do things that they don't really want to do um, so that they do get things done. Um, and we also go into an introduction to the marketing and the kind of mindset that you need to do this kind of work and to get it out there, um, which is different now than it used to be when um, it, when we're when so many more people are used to being online. Um, and by the end of that, then you are a trained facilitator in this method, and then I. You, there is an opportunity to continue being supported by me in a um, facilitator circle where I continue giving you whatever is needed to be uh, given to you in order for you to be able to get out there and get this stuff to people and get other people doing their plans yeah it sounds fantastic Jane when's your next course starting starting on the 1st of October and the details are up on the website at the moment it's before I go solutions.com and then it's big training intensive 2020 with a little dash in between each of those words um, Brilliant, because I'll, I'll, I'll also put the link in the description um, okay. below as well. Thank you. Jane, as always, it's been an uh, incredible privilege to talk to you. I think the work that you do is, is wonderful and never have we needed it more than at this time. No, I know. And thank you so much for inviting me. I really appreciate it. The more I can get this out, the better. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, this is uh, Siobhan and Elsa, who's kept wonderfully quiet she had nothing to contribute <laughs> uh, signing off and thank you jane for being with us for your wisdom uh, and for sharing it thank you so uh, much and wherever you are in the world if the sun isn't shining in your skies may it shine in your heart farewell